So hello, everyone. I, I, first, I would like to appreciate your taking time with me this afternoon. My name is Sun Young Kim. I'm the founder and CEO of Helix Smith. And during this presentation, I will introduce our ALS-focused program called DART, standing for Defeating ALS Through Regenerative Therapeutics. Helix Smith being a public company, I would like to disclose that my presentation contains the forward-looking statement. My talk today is divided into three parts. I will start with a very brief introduction to the company, followed by an overview on ALS-focused program, DART, involving three modalities, and finish the presentation by summarizing the kind of a partnership that we are looking for. Helix Smith is a public company listed on, listed, uh, listed on Korea's Kostak stock market. We have a presence in both Seoul, Korea and San Diego, California. Our US team works almost exclusively on clinical studies done in, uh, primarily done in the US. The major focus of the company is to develop innovative therapeutics by capitalizing on clinically important signaling pathways using gene transfer and antibody technologies. Our major target indications include those diseases resulting from problems associated, associated with nerves, muscles, and artery vessels. Helixmus is a really platform company, platform biotech company, developing a series of different a, therapeutics a, from its a, scientific platforms. Helixmus is also a late stage clinical developmental company conducting several phase twos and phase threes and primarily in the US. And thirdly, Helixmus has achieved many firsts with its flagship product called Angensis or VM202 and demonstrating its potential as a drug development company. And for example, Angensis is the first gene therapy product that entered phase three for pain in the US it is also the first a gene therapy product that received the RMET designation from US FDA for highly prevalent disease. Now I would like to switch gears to introduce our ALS-focused program, namely DART. The first version of the DART program heavily exploit HGF-CMS signaling. HGF is a 92 kilodalton glycoprotein it was originally discovered as a growth factor for hepatocyte, but later was found to contain multiple bioactivities, including angiogenic and neurotrophic, anti-inflammatory, and antifibrotic activities, among others. The cognitive receptor of HGF is a CMAT. CMAT receptors are present in a variety of different cell types, and most importantly, motor neurons, sensory neuron, inflammatory macrophages, and skeletal muscles. Once HGF binds to a CMAT receptor, a different signaling sub-pathways are turned on, depending on the cell types, and generating a series of biological reactions and producing a variety of physiological consequences. And for example, HGF can promote neuronal survival, axon outgrowth, and remyelination. It can also control the expression level of neuroinflammatory cytokines, such as IL-6 and CSF-1. The expected clinical benefits include the restoration of the damaged upper neuron, motor neuron, and spinal motor neuron, and also recovery of damaged neuromuscular junctions and enhancement of Schwann cell functions, and thereby improving motor function and sensory functions. HGF can also mitigate muscle atrophy by regulating the expression level of microRNA-206 and HDEC4 and other genes involved in muscle degeneration. To effectively develop ARS therapeutics, we adopted the kill three birds with one stone strategy. And such a strategy is possible because, as I just mentioned, CMET receptors are present in such a key cell types that play vital roles in the pathogenesis of ALS, namely motor neuron, inflammatory macrophages, including microglia and astrocyte, and skeletal muscle. 
Despite such attractive features of HGF, however, and this is not easy to work, this gene is not easy to work with. And for example, HGF is an extremely unstable protein with half-life being less than five minutes, and therefore recombinant protein strategy does not work. And furthermore, HGF bioactivities are confined to, a, a, to certain areas where HGF is delivered or expressed, uh, is expressed. Therefore, the key to success in exploiting a HGF is to a safely, and how to safely and effectively deliver HGF and maintain its bioactivities in target areas. We developed three modalities that can control the level and duration and distribution of HGF activities, and we are investigating these three modalities in parallel almost simultaneously for clinical studies. Three modalities are based on a, a, a three systems, and one plasmid DNA, recombinant AAV, and humanized antibody. Each modality has its own distinctive pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic characteristics, and depending on the clinical outcome uh, we would like to achieve, we can choose the modality that may generate best clinical outcome. Each one has its, its own strengths and weaknesses. It's not a matter of one modality is much better than other modalities. And first modality that I would like to introduce is the plasmid DNA encoding human HGF sequence. This is, is at the clinical stage, phase one and phase two. Engensis or VM202 is a plasmid DNA engineered to express two isoforms of HGF simultaneously. In phase one study, a, this engensis was delivered to skeletal muscle of upper limb and lower limb a, by simple intramuscular injection involving 27G syringe as summarized in this photograph. The aim of the study was to test whether angensis injection could improve muscle functions. This phase one study was conducted at the Northwestern Medical School involving 18 subjects who received the angensis injection four times on a, on, on, on a weekly basis, and therefore 64 milligrams of angensis in total. Results from this phase one study was published a few years ago and summarized in this slide. And such multiple injections of angensis were safe and well tolerated. And interestingly, it, was, it, it appeared that the disease progression as measured by LSFRS slope or score was slowed or stabilized during the first two or three months after the first injection on day zero. The result from muscle strength evaluation as measured by MRC scale showed similar trend. Encouraged by these results, and we conducted double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled, multi-cent, a small-scale phase 2A study involving 18 subjects, five sites in the USA and Korea. In this study, and we gave three treatments to subjects, and one treatment consisted of 64 milligram, divided into two on two weeks interval, and therefore patient received 192 milligram of angensis in total uh, during the first four months. And such high dose multiple injections of angensis were safe and well tolerated. Well tolerated. And it is an extremely important piece of information because we now know that we have a great deal of freedom in determining dosing scheme for other clinical studies involving, uh, involving angensis. We could not properly assess uh, efficacy because the study size was too small. In fact, the study size became even smaller uh, because three subjects being dropped out from already small size trial. Given limitations of result, however, we could see positive indications in breathing function and bulbar functions at times. We are also planning for third clinical study uh, in this study, we will test whether angensis injection to respiratory muscles can improve breathing functions. 
As you may know, there are three muscles which play vital roles in respiration in humans. And of course, first one is the diaphragm, another one is sternocleidomastoid up here in the neck area, and another one in the rectus abdominis. And this protocol involves the gene transfer to diaphragm for the first time, and we are now a preparing a synopsis to consult FDA. We believe that this is an extremely important trial because it directly addresses the major cause of death in LS patients, namely respiratory failure. Second modality is the recombinant AAB expressing human HGF called NM301. We already demonstrated in the LS animal models that intrathecal injection of the recombinant AAB vector expressing human HGF could improve motor performance, survival rate, morphology of neuromuscular junction, and number and diameter of spinal motor neurons. These data encouraged us a, to, to plan for the a phase one study, and first step taken was to optimize the vector for future clinical study. As summarized in the left box, and the finally optimized vector is a serum type nine, small in size, 4.4 kV, contains the genetic element that improved viral titer and the level of gene expression. Currently, we are preparing for phase one, a conducting a variety of non-clinical works and CMC-related matters. Third modality is the humanized antibody that can activate CMAT receptor. And VM5 or 7 antibody has already been fully characterized at the biochemical level. It has been shown to bind the CMAS receptor with a high affinity and activate HGF CMAS signaling. It is fully humanized IgG1 containing a coprolite chain. It contains all biochemical properties are favorable for developing this antibody as a drug. And for example, uh, pharmacokinetic characteristics, stability feature, its cross reactivity with the CMAS receptors present in large and small animals. Bioactivities of VM5 or 7 antibody have been already demonstrated in a variety of animal models, such as for muscle atrophy, stroke, fibrosis, and wound healing. Data from these experiments demonstrated that VM5 or 7 contain a basically bioactivities of HGF, demonstrating a therapeutic potential of this antibody for ALS. We are currently preparing a research cell bank and followed, and also we are planning for a number of non-clinical works as well as CMT-related matters. So in summary, we developed three modalities, and plasmid DNA is already at the clinical stage, and with AAB, our goal is to improve a motor function and survival rate. We are also very excited to have uh, uh, this humanized antibody because this antibody behaves like HGF, but with a lot more improved in a pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic characteristics. Helix Smith is, a, so in summary, a, we are taking a multimodal parallel approach to effectively develop ALS therapeutics, and we are proud of being at the forefront of fighting ALS. Helix Smith is now seeking partnership for DART to drive forward our scientific and clinical studies. And given the urgent need uh, for delivering LS therapeutics to the LS community, we are quite flexible in our position in establishing the partnership. And we can work together in the form of conventional licensing, co-development, a joint venture, or direct investment in a DART program. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I will stop here.